Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity The sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Our whole life is marked by the sign of the Trinity. The Father created us in love. The Son came to the world to make it possible for us to recover our divine worship, which we lost because of sin. The Holy Spirit continues the work of the Son in the Church and in history until the Lord Jesus returns in glory. In the mystery of the Trinity, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God. Our journey has its origin the Trinity is also our final goal. Someday our eyes will finally contemplate the face of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To preside over our Mass is Reverend Father William Bill Malley, SJ or the Society of Jesus. The Youth Choir of San Isidro, Labrador Parish, will lead us into joyful singing. Come, let us sing and joyfully celebrate. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the grace in, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning, <clears throat> and happy Father's Day. Father. It is appropriate that we are celebrating the peace of the the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on Father's Day because we are honoring 
not only our human fathers, who we should be so grateful to, but our Heavenly Father, who made this whole universe and each one of us. And he loves us, each one of us, with an infinite love. That is the whole mystery that we will reflect upon during this holy liturgy, this holy sacrifice of the Mass. And we want, as every Sunday, to focus on the persons that are especially close to our hearts during this liturgy, which is the handicapped, the elderly, and those who find it impossible to go to their parish church to celebrate this feast day. We are with you as you face the challenges of a difficult life with hope and with joy, and especially the peace of Christ. So let us begin our sacred liturgy with first acknowledging how much we need our Lord and Savior to heal us, to liberate us, and to reconcile us with his loving forgiveness. I forget, <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned to my own faults, in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. And I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. highest. Let's 
us pray to the one God, Father, Son, and Spirit, that our lives may bear witness to our faith. Father, you sent your Son to bring us truth and your Spirit to make us holy. Through them we come to know the mystery of your life. Help us to worship you, one God, in three persons, by proclaiming and living our faith in you. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son. Of God. This is the good news of our salvation. Praise <laughs> you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are blessed during this Sunday liturgy to have heard the closing 
of St. Paul's pastoral letter to the Corinthians. It is so beautiful and so overwhelming. And it gives his experience of the Holy Trinity that we are especially celebrating this Sunday. The grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This came not from the head of St. Paul, but from his heart, as he summarized brilliantly his whole life, from his conversion till his death as a apostle evangelizing, pouring out his life, his energy, his time, his talent, in the service of the Father, of love, in the service of the grace of Jesus Christ, and in the service of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And if we understand his life, we will understand why we are celebrating this feast of the Holy Trinity today on Father's Day. Well, let us go to the event that began St. Paul's apostolic vocation. He had made a wrong judgment and was implementing this judgment something like today's gospel, not believing that Jesus is the Son of God, but he was active. He wanted to destroy these heretics, these ones who were destroying in their own way the Jewish faith as he perceived it. And he was going up to the town, or the city rather, of Damascus to arrest these followers of the way. Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life according to them and he did not believe them. They were insulting God because Jesus was not around. And then as you know, Jesus, the crucified, glorified Jesus, appeared to St. Paul. And he said something which we should reflect upon as we celebrate this sacred liturgy of of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. He said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now there's the whole mystery. Paul could say to Jesus, I'm not persecuting you, I'm persecuting your followers, your disciples. There's the ones I think should be eliminated. But Jesus didn't see it that way. Why? Because everyone who knows and has had a father knows that when you touch someone you love, you touch you. You touch me. There's a bond of belonging. And the person can be away and you get news that a father or a mother or a dear friend is sick, had an accident, and you feel depressed and you want to do something about it. Now that's the mind of the Lord Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus. But in today's gospel, we learn that Jesus came because he was sent by God, who is love, the love of God. St. 
John tells us in his first letter, the fourth chapter, the eighth and the sixteenth verse, not that God is loving, but that not as God is lovable, but that God is love. And he says in the eighth chapter, Paul rather, in the eighth chapter of Romans, we are all adopted children of God. He is our tatai, our daddy. Not our father, but someone who loves and takes care of us. But in the same chapter 8, he tells how the Holy Spirit is bonding us together into a unity, a social grouping, where God is our father, Mother Mary is our mother, and Jesus is our brother. But you can say to St. Paul, oh, he had special gifts of grace and enlightenment and bonding where he could pour out his life in service of the church in fellowship with the Holy Spirit by the grace of God, the grace of Jesus, and the love of God. But that mystery is taking place in us who are bonded together by the Spirit and enlightenment. After the offertory liturgy, we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. And then the presider celebrant will beg God to send down the Holy Spirit, the Creative Spirit, and transform the bread and wine on this table into the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. And we know at the consecration, God is answering that prayer that this bread and wine have been consecrated, transformed into the body and blood of the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's not the end of the mystery that we are celebrating, celebrating the Trinitarian mystery, because later, every one of you will come to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. And when the Eucharistic minister says, the body of Christ, you will say, Amen. But you won't be able to say Amen unless you believe, as we learn in the Gospel, that the Son of God was sent by the Father to save us all and be members of his family. And so the Trinity is not something you learn in the Catechism or that theologians speculate about. It is an experience. And you should have that experience with those of you who are in this TV Mass and those spiritually in your homes who are listening and participating in this Eucharist. Because what is happening to you right now, and to all of us here, is we, like St. Paul, are receiving the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of our Lord and to men, who suffered under the Holy Society, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into death, and the third day rose again, he ascended into heaven, 
and see the bride and his father. They will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. The Father, through the Holy Spirit, has sent Christ, his Son, to be one with us and has made him a source of life for us. Let us realize our petitions to the triune God as we, reply, as we pray, God of love, hear our prayer. God of love, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, send your Spirit to the Church. <laughs> that he may help us in our frailty and provide us with gifts that will make us pleasing to you. We pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, send the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, to religious and political leaders that they may be filled with strength and wisdom to serve your people. We pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Father, send help to the wayward, the sick, the lonely, and those who suffer in any way. We pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Divine Spirit, bind the members of our community together in friendship and unity, that our greetings of peace in the Eucharist may be reflected in our everyday lives, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Father, may our generous donors and collaborators, especially the youth choir and volunteers present here, be filled with the blessings so that they may never get tired in serving you. We pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Father, for the intentions of our Mass presider and birthday celebrant, Reverend Father William Malley, that the Trian God may grant him length of days, good health and a lucid mind, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Father, grant healing to all those who ask for it, especially to Perla Samson, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Father of all the living, bring the dead, especially our benefactors, Luis Unlai, to share in your glory, the glory, too, of your Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Father, you sent your word to bring us the truth and your spirit to make us holy. Help us to worship you, one God and three persons, by proclaiming and living our faith in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord, my 
<clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. It is a fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become the wine of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Be pleased to accept these gifts, O Lord, and be pleased to accept us who offer them to you in sorrow for our sins and in simplicity. Wash away all my wickedness, O Lord. Cleanse me from all my evil. My sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. <clears throat> Let it. Lord, our God, make these gifts holy, and through them make us a perfect offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Today you sent the Holy Spirit on those marked out to be your children by sharing the life of your only Son, and so you brought the Paschal mystery to its completion. Today we celebrate the great beginning of your church. When the Holy Spirit made known to all people the one true God and created for us many languages of man, one from many, in, many in, uh, languages of man, one voice to profess our faith. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world as we honor the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, in Holy Spirit, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to the glory of the Holy Trinity. fountain of all holiness, let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He 
broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, Fernando Capaglia, our Archbishop, and all the clergy and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Now pray to our Heavenly Father in the beautiful prayer Jesus personally confided to us. mercy grant peace in our day, that by your constant kindness we may be ever free from sin and protected from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever, forever, forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us greet each other with the sign of Christian peace. <laughs>
This is the crucified, glorified Jesus, the Lamb of God, who symbolizes the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. How blessed we are to receive Jesus during this liturgy. Lord, Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, we worship you, a trinity of persons, one eternal God. May our faith and the sacrament we receive bring us health of mind and body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, your Son accepted our suffering to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease realize that they are chosen to be saints 
and know that they are joined to Christ in his suffering for the salvation of the world, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God <clears throat> forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have celebrated the Holy Eucharist as a family. <clears throat> Let us continue to enjoy the peace and the joy that comes from the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. To God. a gift and a journey. Towards what goal are you journeying? This gift of life, where do you want to spend it? With whom? For what? Whoever you are, wherever you are, God is inviting you to be His special messenger, to bring His word, His love, His joy, His peace to all peoples through the communications media.